Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited for this new series that we're doing. Um, it's called Gear Up Iowa Coffee Talk. And we're gonna talk to students, we're gonna talk to coaches, we're gonna talk to just a variety of people who have been with Gear Up since the beginning and also for about the past year. Um, you know, during the pandemic, it was very, it was, it was a wild time. So here today, very excited to have my team here this morning. Um, Nate, Gracie, and Carmen, uh, thank you guys for, for doing this. I know it's, uh, it's, it's a little weird, um, you know, not being in person, but welcome and, and thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. Good morning. Hey, everyone. All right. And, and, you know, some of us have been veterans of Gear Up since the beginning. Um, and I'm looking at you, Nate. Um, so tell me, what is it that you've seen from Gear Up 1.0 um, all the way to, to this point? What are some things that you have seen that have um, gone successful that, that you think you can say, yeah, you know, th this is something that, um, you know, it's something that, that you, that happened in the, in 1.0 and then you made sure that in 2.0 you improved. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I did start, uh, at the beginning of 2.0. And so I was able to see and connect actually with some of the students, uh, that were part of 1.0. And I think uh, where we grew the most was uh, in terms of having more staff support the Gear Up grant. I think uh, looking back at 1.0, predominantly the support came from the central office at Iowa College Aid going out. That was very taxing and we didn't have enough staff to be able to get to everybody. As we transitioned into 2.0, uh, Sioux City was our first district that hired coaches or the coach role and they had that from uh, seventh grade through 12th grade. And then many of our other districts that were able to follow that suit started that in high school. And we were able to hire more boots on the ground, more coaches to support the counselors to help ensure that the programming was happening and making sure that students were getting connected. So I think that was probably the, the biggest advancement that I've seen. Um, and I will put it out there. I wasn't there for 1.0. This is um, based off of what I know and then kind of where we came when I started in December of 2014 with the current Gear Up grant. And then, and then Carmen, you kind of followed like right after that, right? You just kind of came in uh, during during uh, the 2.0. When when did you start? Um, and what are some things that you've seen that you're like, okay, this is this is really cool that we're that we're doing some some cool stuff. Um, I will say that I not to toot my own horn, but uh, STEM at the ballpark was, you know, w was something that I was very excited about, but Carmen, go ahead. Yeah, I started, um, I'm 2.0 with the start of the third year. So the students were just starting high school. So it was a really exciting time. The students were just in new school. Um, and when I was interviewing, I was really excited about all the stuff that, you know, I knew was going on. But when I actually started the team, it was even more mind blowing the stuff that really happened. Like, you know, we were spread out over these 12 school districts across the state and they each had so much going on and all the support at the schools. Um, so I was just really blessed and excited to be, you know, joining the team and then really realizing how big of an impact the gear was actually having when I actually set foot you know, in the community. So it was great. It was a good, a, good, a breath of fresh air to see all that was going on. Girl, and you moved from like this to here. Um, tell me a little bit about how um, that changed as far as your role from, from a facilitator um, to them being um, the, the program coordinator. Yeah, so um, when I started in year three, I was over um, three of the larger school districts. So I had Sioux City, Cedar Rapids, and Davenport. And um, so, you know, that was a transition, just learning all those school districts and, and getting acquainted with how the districts run things and the different personalities that you work with. 
Um, so transitioning to the coordinator role was, I think the main difference was just not really having as much contact with the schools and, and the direct service support. You do, but it's on a different level. Um, so, you know, I did appreciate having those those relationships with the with the staff at the school and being able to see the students. You didn't, I didn't really get to do that as much as a coordinator, but at the coordinator level, you were able to see, you know, more of the bigger picture and really able to interact with all of the districts. Um, so that's been um, rewarding in this role as well. And then we have Gracie. Um, you are like, you're the baby of, of, of joining the team. Um, uh, Tell me, how is it that you, you know, you came in and you just, it just seemed like you just picked up and just took off. Um, how was your transition with, you know, where you were before to, you know, getting into really um, what Gear Up does? Yeah, so I am the baby. I'm so happy that I had such a wonderful team. Uh, learning from you guys made transitioning a lot easier. Um, History-wise, I've always worked, mostly worked in education and like trio programs. So the work wasn't unfamiliar to me, but the work I did right before was a world away from uh, Gear Up. I was a domestic violence advocate. And so like I would help individuals kind of build their best lives, which if you look at titles, seems very different than what Gear Up does domestic violence advocate, uh, college and career readiness seems worlds apart. But essentially what we're doing is encouraging these kids to take actions to build their best lives, mm -hmm. um, to set goals for themselves, to pursue their dreams and believe in them uh, so that, you know, they have the confidence to pursue what they want to pursue. And so in that sense, it was a very smooth transition. Um, I and blessed that I have a lot of skills that like lend themselves well to like supporting the people who do the work. Um, I am just in awe of our coaches who are in the schools doing the work with the students day in, day out. I mean, I think we've all been at the schools and our coaches have been mental health advocates. They've been uh, <laughs> physical fitness and wellness educators. They've been like anything the kids go through, uh, mediators of teenage conflict, <laughs> um, on top of actually like, you know, giving them the tools to be successful, to get into college and get into apprenticeships and things like that. So like seeing the work that they do and just being able to support them is honestly what makes me so happy about my job. So now that we're kind of on sort of the topic of, you know, uh, mental health and physical health and things like that. Um, over the past year, um, we've all had to transition, um, you know, and, and just kind of find our way um, and navigating through these new waters. Um, what was the one thing that you are just like, man, this was, this was awesome, you know, whether it was a coach that did something or a student that did something that, that you were like, yeah, okay, we can, we can do this. Um, and it's virtual, but it's still done. Oh, go ahead, Gracie. I, I saw that you unmuted too. You can go first if you'd like. I the awkward you silence that, but... is allowed, everyone. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, like, all of our colleges had a plan put in place, and that plan was developed pre-COVID. And so seeing them adapt and build new structures from the ground up that they never had to imagine they would have to do was pretty amazing. Um, I've been really lucky in the sense that I've gotten to work with the texting campaign. And so a lot of what's been going on with students who didn't go to college for one reason or the other may or may not have been COVID impacted, but being able to have those conversations with them and help process. And then also seeing the persistence of those students. Um, you all know, we've been texting students that weren't enrolled this year. And so many of the ones I've been texting are like, oh yeah, I'm starting in the fall, I'm enrolled or I'm in the process of enrolling. And so they've arguably had some of the hardest transitions post high school. 
and here they are still persisting. So yeah, that's something that's been really neat for me. Nate, all you buddy. Hey, I was going to say something very similar to Gracie. Uh, the fact that uh, when we sat down and we drafted these plans, like the thought of COVID was nowhere in anybody's mind. And then, you know, the thought that, you know, once COVID happened, that, that it would have been as persistent as it was in terms of, you know, keeping campuses closed and, and everything shifting to virtual. Um, with the exception of one of my campuses, all of them were, were pretty much virtual, mostly virtual or mostly uh, hybrid slanted towards virtual. And so their, their resilience and the staff, you know, not, not only the, the uh, college coordinators who I got to work with, but also their teams, their teams were, were very um, willing to kind of figure out how can we best serve students and, and everybody, like Gracie said, just got creative. And I, I want to say, I think the, the thing that, that happened uh, with most of my schools across the board was uh, they decided to introduce peer mentoring. And they're like, okay, if we're struggling on getting students to show up to events and we're, we're struggling to reach students, what if we were to find the student leaders and we were to empower them and work with them to help us uh, be able to reach more students? What kind of difference would that make? And in the end, I think it made a huge difference. Not only were the coordinators now, did they have like a small team of students that they were able to work with, but they were then able to leverage uh, those students' social capital in terms of, you know, sharing events, getting feedback, trying to figure out how we could best serve the students so, so that they could persist, so that they could be engaged. And so that, um, you know, we, we could have the most successful year that we possibly could. And so I think really it just boils down to what Gracie was saying, creativity, resilience, and, you know, just, just, persisting, you know, not, not giving up and constantly trying something new. And I think it was hard um, just because, you know, right, everyone in their mind is like, oh, I'm going to get all these students to show up to stuff. And then realizing that with how everything changed, that success may not be getting 30 students to show up at a room uh, to participate in something, but it may be 30 students showing up to 10 or 12 different uh, virtual settings and having that engagement at that time. And, and so I think the mindset, mindset just had to shift. And I think uh, they did a really great job, all the staff and, and all of our partners in making that shift so that we could best serve our students. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough transition. Um, and, you know, as far as going back and forth, you know, yes, we're gonna be in the classroom. No, we're not going to be in the classroom. Um, you know, and, and students not being able to, um, you know, fully graduate. Um, I'm sure that must have been hard. What is one thing that you would tell, um, even though you know they've already graduated high school, um, looking back, what's one, what's one thing that you would say to a student if they were right in front of you right now, saying like, yeah, it's no big deal. So, yeah. Uh, you go ahead, Carmen. I was gonna just ask, um, like if you were, if you can, so if we were talking to a student and one of the, some advice we would give them, is that what you're asking, Medina? Trying to make so sure I understand the question, I wanna answer it right. No, 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 so, so um, you know, sometimes we, we look at life and we're, you know, we're like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. I went through that, no big deal, but we, in the process of all of that, you know, we've learned things. Um, I've, I've heard several of you guys say the word resilient um, and creative, things like that. Um, what would you say to a student that was standing in front of you and they're like, yeah, it's no big deal. I graduated high school through a pandemic. Oh, yeah. I think that, you know, we say the term high insight is 2020 and we laugh about how that's such a ironic and maybe not the best phrase anymore but um, sometimes when you go through a situation um, you don't really realize how strong you had to be to get through that situation because you do what you know you needed to do and I feel like with graduating um, and going to college those are the two main goals of the gear up program like we want to see these students graduate high school, we want to see them persist on and be successful in college. And the pandemic, you know, could potentially have impacted a lot of students in a negative way where those two goals weren't a reality. But for a lot of students, as Gracie and Nate both talked about, like they persisted through, they were resilient, they, 
you know, made those transitions to make those two goals a reality. So I just think just really allowing students to see um, their successes for what they are and, and the, the place that they had in making that success happen in their lives, you know, and not to downplay that and to really realize the courage that it took, the resources that they needed to pursue to make it happen, um, and just trusting and, and believing in their goals enough to continue through such a, you know, traumatic, okay, because that's <laughs> what the pandemic was. It was traumatic, and it was new, and um, I feel like if we can be able to, to make it through this pandemic and still reach our goals and still persist, that we can do anything, and so I feel like I believe that is encouragement for students like you you were able to accomplish this during this type of pandemic then you can really do anything and using that to fuel them for those next goals that they want to um, aspire to reach all right mic drop that was it like <laughs> carmen said the words um that yeah that's some that's some really you know as as you said hindsight is 2020 and we probably shouldn't use that but um yeah you said that you said that perfectly um so before we go um i just want to hear from each of you what is it that you love about gear up in one sentence you made it tricky with that one sentence piece. i i did i did i was like wait a second <laughs> well, what I love about Gear Up is the, the support, this family-like support that it provides. I, I think that we, this is going to be a long sentence, um, but the, a run out of sentence. A support through the state that we provide, not only students, but families and communities. I love the overarching reach that it has and the impact that it has um, threefold. I think for me, what I love about Gear Up is the redefinition of the student's story. We get to help them define their story or redefine it because they've only heard the perspectives of the people around them. And we come in and we tell them the perspectives of people who believe in their full potential. Who the one sentence is really hard. I, I think if I had to sum it up into one sentence for me, it would be, I love Gear Up because it's all about providing students with as many opportunities to be their best selves and, and to help them grow into their best selves. And I love Gear Up um, because I, I, I um, you know, it's very humbling to see these students grow um, and just seeing them persist through everything. And I think my favorite part is seeing the kids self-advocate for themselves. Um, you see them as, as freshmen and then all of a sudden they're freshmen in college. And so you're like, oh. Okay, you're, you're growing up, so that would be uh, my sentence. But um, thank you guys for being here. And again, I know it's a little, it's a little wonky with with uh, virtual things still going on. Um, but I'm glad that we're able to to do this, and I'm glad that you guys were able to say, "Hey, yeah, for sure, I'll do this." Anytime. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right, everyone, um, stay tuned and we will have more Gear Up Coffee Talks for you.